But let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, there are a lot of folks in our family who aren't here today for one reason or another. And that saddens me. I, I don't want to stand up here and not see people's faces that I love and care about and look forward to seeing every week when I only see them once a week and I don't get to see them. It doesn't leave me with the best feeling. So God, it's not about me, I know that. But I want you, according to your scripture, we can come before you and we can pray and we can lay the request at your feet. And I pray according to your will that you will heal these people. That you will enter whatever part of their life that they need, that physical, emotional, spiritual, financial touch from you that only you can provide. And we ask that you either meet, delete, or exceed the need. Heal those who are sick. I'm tired of hearing the word cancer. I'm tired of hearing the word COVID, especially when it affects someone in my family. Satan, I rebuke you. I'm sick of you. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I rebuke you. And I release the Holy Spirit by God's authority to move in a mighty way to heal those in our family. And by extension, those who need a physical touch from you today. So no matter where they may be standing, sitting, or lying, I ask, Heavenly Father, that they begin to sense and feel a warmth, a healing, a, a change, something happening within them and surrounding them that maybe they can't even explain, but it's the initial beginnings of your healing touch throughout their bodies. Lord, those who have been injured, where they're broken, mend them. I had a prayer request this morning, Heavenly Father, to a family who needs your touch. Please work in that family. We love you, not just because of who you are, but also because of what you've done and what you can do. You said in your word, in Second Peter, that by the stripes of your son, we were healed. So we claim that healing now for ourselves, for our family members and our friends. Be with us the rest of this service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Scripture reading for this morning is kind of short, sweet, like me. Thank you very much. Second Timothy 3.14, the beginning of that verse. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and what you have become convinced of. Second Timothy 3.14. But as for you, Continue in what you have learned and what you have been convinced of. Hopefully, by now, we have learned the Christmas story. Hopefully, by now, we are convinced that it is the truth that what was said, that was done in this book, is inerrant, it is valid, nothing can come against it, it is truth, it is life, it shows the way, it is the light. So if that is the case in your life, then that is a message that we should share every day, not just Christmas. So my title of my sermon this morning is Let Christmas Continue. I presume I'll be the very first person to wish you a merry post-Christmas. So merry post-Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. I pray and trust that all of you had a a good Christmas, and we've already heard some testimony of people who've experienced a little bit differently this year. I pray that your family's experienced his compassionate, sweet, and gentle love throughout the season. And because of the blessing that we normally always receive around this time, I'm just asking us to take what that is and to continue it through my birthday and through Elliot's birthday and through the first and the second and then January, February, all year long. So that Christmas Eve service next year, we can say that we were unabashedly sharing the Christmas message all the way through. It didn't end on December 31st. <clears throat> 
I know a lot of churches and ministries and pastors and preachers more likely focus on how we should start the new year, how it's a new year, new beginning, how we, the old is you know, gone and the new has come, which is all relevant and great, and I'll be touching on some of that. But I really felt convicted by the Holy Spirit to challenge us to take the spirit of Christmas, the message of Christmas, and the joy of Christmas and make sure we continue all of them well into the new year. If it ain't broke, why fix it? It's a term we're all very familiar with. And while I don't subscribe to that way of thinking on everything, I do when it comes to the message of Jesus Christ and sharing it. It's not a broken message. It is a message of wholeness and healing, if anything. And we can take that message and share that with every single person we come in contact with. Every moment, every day of our lives. Christianity undeniably has the greatest message the world has ever known or this world will ever know. There are no better messages. There are no other messages that offer the sacrifice of and the salvation through Jesus Christ. There are no other messages can offer the definite promise of eternal life in the presence of an almighty God. There is no other message that can offer the absolute peace on this earth and absolute perfection in heaven. And the older, <laughs> the older I get, the more I'm looking forward to that physical wholeness in heaven. I turned 61 today as about five hours ago. Yesterday, just getting up from a seated position, my body decided to fall apart again. I wasn't going to sit this morning, but I'm leaning. I'm leaning on the pulpit the pain shot through my back down to my foot. I'm like, you got to be kidding. I'm already hurting. Why aren't you healing me? So instead of healing me, now you're adding more pain to the other side. I don't know. <laughs> All I did was get up. My sister sent me a birthday card. It was, she thought very funny. It was, you know, you broke your back when you sneezed. You know, you pulled a muscle when you burped and had this list of things when you're old that all these things happen to you. I actually bruised my tailbone years ago when I held in a sneeze. I don't know how it happened, but I'm evidence that it did take place. So message to you, don't hold in your sneezes. Take a hanky or a tissue everywhere you go. I'm looking forward to getting to heaven. There are no other messages that offer worthless humanity the unconditional love of God. And if all that comes from the start of a baby boy, and we know that it does, then why should we ever stop sharing that message merely because some numbers on a calendar dictate to us we need to move on and shift our focus elsewhere? Mary carried the message of the baby for nine months. So if she can take it nine months, maybe that's our goal, is take it for the next nine months and see if we can't push on the remainder of three months out of the year. If the message and the joy of the birth of Jesus is good enough for the Christmas season, then why isn't it good enough for the whole year? Why do we put it aside? The tree will come down. I, was, I hate this. I was asking somebody this morning while we were sitting around, I was like, when's all this stuff coming down? I said, well, probably this week. I'm like, oh, man, I wish we could leave it up all, all year because it looks so empty when it's gone. You get, you get used to seeing what's happened and everything and the, the candles from last, last Sunday night. Thank you for every single person who helped decorate and undecorate for making last week a special day, morning and night. But I miss this when it's gone. I miss the wreaths. I miss the banners. I miss the air of Christmas. But it will come down. But the message doesn't have to stop. There's no reason that the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ has to stop being shared just because the calendar flips over to a new day, a new month, a new year. The message comes from this holy book, Undeniable Truth. And there's ever a time this world needs to hear the undeniable truth it is now. I challenge all of us, including me, to share the gospel that that little baby boy represented tomorrow 
and the next day, January, February, March, all the way through to next Christmas. If we each do that, can you imagine the impact we will have in our community, in our families, in our jobs, in our homes, in our schools? <laughs> I don't ever do things to bring people into the church. I think that's the wrong reason. Well, we're going to have a daycare because we'll reach out to the community. We'll get more people. We're going to have this dinner because it's going to reach these people and bring more people in. I think the mindset of the church for a long time has been wrong. I think you reach out because you're supposed to reach out. Whether anybody ever darkens the door of the church afterwards, that should never be the call point to doing what is right to do. However, I do believe that if we take the steps that Jesus asked us to take, that he will bring people into the church. And it may be to nothing of us doing except being faithful. So let's be faithful. Let's share the good news of Jesus Christ. If you look at my Facebook page, and I've said this before, my profile, there's a little blurb in there that says, extending God's love, extending his love, expanding his kingdom. That should be the nutshell of what we do as a Christian. Extend his love for the purpose that when they realize who God is, they'll want to have him in their life, adopted into his family, and his kingdom is expanded. I want to take a quick glance at the calendar upcoming for this year so we can recognize ways we can share the message of Jesus Christ, the message of the gospel, and the message of God's great love. It's going to be a short sermon. So we'll get out of here by New Year's 2025. January, obviously that's a point of new beginnings, a new year. Jesus' birth always illustrates a new beginning. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You'll know most of these verses, but I'm going to say them anyway. Therefore, if anyone's in his... <laughs> you'll know the ones that are presented correctly. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, things, all things are become new. Listen to me real quick. I found something that I thought was amazing. It's not just that we're cleaned up. It's not that the old has been cleaned up, but we have. The Bible says he washes our sins and our heart is white as snow. So we are cleaned up. It's not just that. It's that we are made new. There's a big difference between clean up and new. I have a car that's 20 years old in good shape and it can be cleaned up, but it's in no way a new car. I got to drive Rachel's brother's Suburban this weekend for the day, and I thought, oh, my gosh, I could move in here. It had all the, I could take a shower. I could cook. I could do everything. You know, all of the things were available to me in just the captain's seat of that Suburban. There's a difference between being cleaned up and new. We have been cleaned up when we ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins, but we also made new. The making of new is what provides us the opportunities to do new things, to go no place, new places, to experience new opportunities and activities, to find a strength within us that we haven't had before to do the things he's calling us to do. We can't do that simply by clean, being cleaned up. We can only do that by being made new, and we can only be made new by the power of the Holy Spirit. February is always Valentine's Day or Groundhog's Day. My daughter was born on Groundhog's Day. I called her my little gopher until she said, Dad, please stop. We focus on love during Valentine's. John 15, 13, and we had this last week. Greater love has no man than he who lays down his life for a friend. How often do we share that message with people that we interact with? Now, I admit, buying a pair of socks at Walmart or a suit at your favorite store or picking up some, where was that restaurant you picked up your food from? <laughs> Olive Garden, you went to pick up your, <laughs> your dinner. It may be difficult to have that conversation. Hey, thanks for the linguine. You know Jesus loves you? I love these socks. They're my favorite pair. Jesus died on the cross for you. It may not always be the most opportune time or way but there's a, there's a prayer my dad asked us to pray from when we were very young. God, give me the opportunity today to make a difference for you and put someone in my path who needs to hear your message. And when you pray that prayer, God will make that happen. 
But we don't pray that prayer because we get too busy. Got our job, got the kids, got the marriage, got our stuff. And we're missing the boat. We are not sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. If people will understand that God loves them so much that he came to this earth, he went to the cross, he died in their place, he rose from the grave, and he's sitting in heaven now waiting for them to come to him so he can take them home to heaven, just that quick little bit of information might just be what someone needs to hear to help turn their life around. March, we think of a St. Patrick's Day and the four-leaf clover and luck. I'm not related to St. Patrick. By the way, that was his first name. It's a good thing we don't have to rely on luck as Christians because we have Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not harm you, but plans to give you a hope and a future. Maybe you don't need that message today, but maybe someone whom you cross paths with does need that message. Maybe they're going through a horrible, horrible time. Maybe they've lost a friend or a loved one. Maybe they're dealing with a financial or health crisis that they don't see any way out of. God has plans for them. And not just good plans, but perfect plans. And perfect plans for their life specifically. Not to cause problems, not to cause harm, but to bring a prosperity into their lives and to give them hope in a future where they feel like they have none. Can we not share that message with them? April, springtime, um, again, new beginnings, a freshness, opportunities to learn. I love this scripture. If this doesn't scream spring, I don't know what does. Deuteronomy 32 and 2. Let my teaching fall like rain and my words descend like dew, like showers on the new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. That makes me think of spring. What a beautiful depiction of how God can love us tenderly, kindly, sweetly, and still teach us all things in that same parameter. The Bible says he has a sweet, still, small voice he speaks of. Obviously, there's thunder. He can speak through the thunder. He can speak through the rain. He can speak through anything. But at the time of spring and April, let our message be to those who need to hear it that God loves you. He's gentle. He's kind. He's thoughtful. He's giving. He's sweet. And in a world that right now that is anything but those things might be a good message to share. In May, that's considered the abundant month, abundant blessings, God's radiance. Psalm 145.5, they will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and I will meditate on your wonderful works. We serve a God who has no limits. We serve a God who can do everything and anything. There's nothing that is impossible with God, through God, by God, for God, to God, any, any preposition you want to throw in there. Maybe someone needs to hear that in their frailty, in their limits, that there's a God out there who loves them and has no limits, that can break through every barrier that they're facing that they're staring at, that they see no way past. God will make a way where there is no way. Maybe we share that message of his abundant blessings and his power and his radiance. June, the official start of summer, Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. Look to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Without any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. It lets us know that as long as we do our part, God's taking care of our needs. Get up in the morning. Have your devotions. Have your prayer. Spend time in praying with and for your spouse. Start your day in a manner that's going to be a blessing to God and him to you in return. So that everything you do in that day then is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And at the end of the day, you can put your head in the pillow after saying goodnight to your spouse and your your Lord. And you sleep in peace because you know that everything that was done was done, ordered by his steps. There's time to do things. We are expected to do things as Christian young men and women, as Christian old men and women. We're expected to do things. 
We have a calling in our lives. Use the gifts and talents that he's given us on a daily basis to honor him and to show the world who he is and what he's about so their lives can be transformed and changed. July, we think of independence and freedom. I love July 4th. I love what it stands for. I love everything about it. I live in a country that still celebrates its freedoms. Freedoms like today, being in this church at this time, saying these words to these people. Not every nation has that opportunity. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And the following with John 8.36 So if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Man, we are bound by so many things, especially in this nation, because we've had everything handed to us. We get bound by selfishness. We get bound by pride. We get bound by money. We get bound by poverty. We get bound by sickness. We get bound. And the Holy Spirit wants to remind us that God can bring through every single one of the areas of our lives that we're bound to and find freedom in all of those. God does not want to walk when us walking around with a heavy weight on our shoulders, feeling like we can't get past a circle that surrounds our lives. He wants us to push through those things, let him take the weight off our shoulders and begin to move in a way that only he can orchestrate so his will is done in our lives and through our lives to honor him and more people will come to Christ because of it. 100 was wearing a jacket a few weeks ago. I'm like, man, I love that jacket. And Hunter's a big guy. Taller than I am. I'm not sure he's as round as I am, but he's a big guy. I love Hunter. Hunter's cool. Hunter's real. He'll let you know exactly where he stands with the first three words out of his mouth. No apologies. That's who I am, and I love that. And I like that jacket so much, I said, where'd you buy that? So he told me. So I went there a week or two ago, and I didn't want to get the same exact jacket because I didn't want Hunter to think I was an older twin version of him. Because, you know, we do look a lot alike. Got the hair, the beard. But I couldn't find another jacket in that store that I liked any better than that one, so I bought that one. And I talked to the lady in the store. Hey, do you guys have a place I can try this on? She said, sure, it's right back there. I said, I apologize for interrupting. No, that's what I'm here for. She was very kind. I tried on the jacket. It's still a little bit open here, but I'm thinking in a month or so it'll close, I can zip it up and you know, it'll look good and people will mistake us for brothers and th- think they were twins. But as I left that place, it hit me, I didn't say one thing to that lady or anybody else in the store having to do anything scriptural. And we don't. We don't do that. And I, I'm as guilty as everybody else in this room. We walk in the store, we get what we want, and we walk out. We walk into the restaurant, we eat what we want, and we get out. We go to the gym, we work out how we want, and we get out. We go in our neighbor's home, we visit, we get out. When was the last time we did any mentioning of a loving God? Maybe we assume or presume that they don't need to hear it because we know they're already Christians. You have no idea sometimes the pain and the agony and the torment that they're hiding, that they don't want anybody else to know about, either out of embarrassment or pride. I've been in homes of people that when they started sharing, I was shocked at the things that came out of their mouth, not because they were being mean, but because they were sharing things I had no clue what was going on in their lives, and I was able to pray for them or at least counsel with them or just be there. I was staying with some friends at one time, I was watching their kids and they were away. I thought they were at a restaurant and they came home and they sat down the family and I sat in front of the fireplace and Chad, the dad said, uh, we weren't at a restaurant. We were at the doctor's and his wife, Tammy had just found out that she had stage four colon cancer. I knew none of this and Chad and I were good friends. We served together in multiple churches and still buddies to this day, but I didn't know Tammy was dealing with cancer. So I prayed with the family. That's all I knew to do. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ wherever you go. If you pray that prayer, God making a divine appointment to put somebody in my path today who needs to hear about you and let me be faithful to share it. Maybe it's while you're pumping gas. Maybe it's while you're getting a facial. 
By the way, if you want a good facial, see Rachel. Look at this. I'm a, I'm a great act for her business. And somebody said, I didn't look any older than I did back then, so that's good work right there. Share the love of Jesus. August, reflection or repentance. Ephesians 5.1, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. We really should on a daily basis reflect to see if we've done anything to harm anyone, said anything to hurt someone's feelings, if we were out of step with God's you know, path for our life. We really should. We don't, but we should. We usually do it on Sunday morning, especially when we take communion. We have that time to reflect and repent. That's wonderful. But we could do that on a daily basis. Sometimes I do that on an hourly basis. If I'm on 77, it could be a moment-by-moment -moment basis. <laughs> I have to fight against, you know, what would Jesus do? Well, he ain't driving this car in this traffic. I'd like to see how he'd handle this. Repent. Reflect. Be imitators of God, and we can't imitate God if we're still living in ways that don't reflect who he is. One of the best ways we can stay humble and contrite and receiving the Holy Spirit of God is when we share the message of Jesus with other people. September, the month of completion and achievement, Philippians 1.6, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. Now, my understanding of the day of Christ Jesus is when he takes his, his bride back home to heaven. So we have some time. I don't know how much time. Not enough time anymore as it was compared to when I was that age on that screen. The sands of time have come through the top of that jar or whatever. The Thank you <laughs> to the bottom. A lot of sand has passed in my 61 years. We're closer to him breaking through the sky in the eastern sky and listening for that trumpet than we ever have been before in my lifetime. And some of you who are older than I obviously have seen even more. We're closer to them than you were born. But we have things we need to do. If you are a Christian and you accepted God to be the Lord of your life, then we need to be in a place where we're understanding that we are not complete yet, but we will be when he takes us home. But we need to work towards that completion, allow the Holy Spirit to work in us so that we can become what he wants us to be while we're still on this earth. October is a time for autumn and harvest, Matthew 9, 36 and 7. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And he said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. I wonder if Matthew could pull back a curtain of heaven and look at the earth now if he would say the same exact thing. They were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Just look in your own backyard. Look in our county, our country, our state. Look, look around us. Look in this world. We're in bad shape because they don't have the shepherd. And they're wandering around hurting themselves and others because they're confused and because they're helpless because they have no one in their life who's guiding them. What a great message. The Bible says the harvest is large. The workers are few. There's too few of us who get outside that door on Sunday morning and repeat what we've done in this service outside this service. We go to work, we go to school, we go to college, we go on dates, we go shopping. We don't share the message of Jesus Christ to the world that needs to hear it. In a time that is ticking so quickly, we can't see the expanse of time of how quickly it's moving. The only thing that's keeping Jesus from coming down now is God's patience, wanting to see more of his creation come to him before he says, go and get your bride. Don't be selfish with your salvation. Share it. If God gave his son 
and his son sacrificed his life, then we can certainly speak about it to those who need to hear it. November's Thanksgiving. Psalms 104, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Tagging along to that, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We said it before since I've been here in my four short months. Gratitude will always adjust our attitude. When we're thankful, when we're in a spirit of God, thank you for your gifts, your blessings, your love, your kindness, your mercy, your healing, your patience. When we stay in that mindset, when we stay in that heart set, in that soul set, God will use us more mightily than you can ever imagine. In times you may not even think about. I think I told you maybe a few weeks ago about the time I came out of Walmart and I was waiting to pay and there was a veteran there, um, an African-American veteran who, for whatever reason, was in tears. I don't remember the, what happened prior to me getting to that spot in line. And as we got out, I just wanted to, I said, I just wanted to thank you. So I noticed your hat because he was wearing his Navy hat. I said, I wanted to thank you for your service. And he wrapped his arms around me and just started crying again. And I thought, I don't know what I've said or done. But if I can make a difference in this man's life at this moment, then that's a God thing. The time I helped a lady find her car in the Walmart parking lot, that was still being a, a representative of God in that place at that time. It doesn't have to be a big Billy Graham moment or a sermon or a speech or spouting out verses. Just being there and being kind, asking to pray for them, asking to pray with them can make the biggest difference in someone's life. But we won't know until we put action to it. Finally, coming full circle to December, we obviously know of Christmas, James 1.17. We used this last week. Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light who does not change like shifting shadows. So let's let the good news continue. Let's let Christmas continue. And I think it's, it's more let's make Christmas continue rather than just allowing it to or letting it. Because when we let something happen or we allow something to happen, there's too many other variables that can come in and take out away. But if we're purposeful, if we make things happen, it's much more likely to take place. I think we all agree that there is a very special air about Christmas. It truly is an unquestionable, indisputable joy that surrounds the birth of Christ. Yet all too often we let that joy dissipate. We allow it to disappear once the New Year's begins. Why can't we keep the joy, the joy unspeakable and full of glory, joy? The joy, ask and you shall receive, joy. The joy that is good medicine, joy. The kingdom is at hand joy, the fruit of the spirit joy, the salvation is mine joy, the I can live forever in heaven with God the Father joy, the I can do all things joy, the rise and be healed joy, the stone is rolled away and he is not here joy, the he shall provide all my needs joy, the well done thy good and faithful servant joy, the he is the bread of life and the living water joy, the he is the resurrection, resurrection and the life joy. We need to keep that and share that. It doesn't have to stop in December. Just because they saw the star and they rejoiced with great joy, we have a lot of other joy we can share, and we should carry that joy with us. Because the joy that was bundled and swaddling clothes and laying in the manger was Jesus, is Jesus, will always be Jesus, and our joy for today can be the joy forevermore. Don't be selfish by holding on to that joy. Give it away. If God was selfish and never gave us his son, we'd be in a real pickle right about now. Let's continue Christmas. We have a God-ordained mission. We have a sacred responsibility to carry out his word, to share the precious gospel of Jesus Christ, and that godly duty is called the Great Commission. According to Matthew 28, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Even if your name's not Shirley, he's still with you. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. 
What does your great commi- uh, what does your great commission look like? Who are you sharing with? Where are you going to share? Are you sharing? Just share the joy of his salvation and go from there. We don't have to have all the answers because on this side of heaven we never will. We don't have to say all the right things because obviously I have trouble every single week that I speak. We don't have to go to another country. We just go to our backyard, see our neighbors, share with our coworkers, spread the joy at the schools where our children go. We can talk to anyone whom God pleases and places in our path. Just spread his joy. The first two words of that scripture are, therefore, go. He's not asking. That is a command. Go. So we have to go. But we can do so confidently. And we can share because he will always be with us. And he was always working everything out within us and for us and around us. He always does. A few more scriptures I just put together here at the end to let Christmas continue. Let brotherly love continue. Continue in prayer and thanksgiving. Continue in these things, for in doing this, you will save yourself and those who hear you. Continue in my word and be my disciples. Continue witnessing to both the small and the great. Let's allow the joy of the Lord to be our strength so that we can help make Christmas continue. God, it's your example of giving that we should follow. It's your example of sacrifice that we should follow. If you withheld your gift, we would not be here today. And we'd have no chance of salvation. We'd have no chance of eternal life. We'd have no chance of spending eternity with you and Jesus and those who've gone on before. Heavenly Father, help us to be more like you. The gospel message never ends. It never changes. It's, it's solid. It, it's continual. Something that can be counted on from the moment it was created until the moment it's no longer needed, which will be never. I thank you, Father, for the gift of your Son. I thank you, Jesus, for laying down your life on the cross. For receiving the power of your Father to break out of the tomb. And to be there now waiting on his instructions to come and take your bride. But in the meantime, let us look like you. Let us sound like you. Not perfection. Because we will never achieve that until we walk into heaven, Heavenly Father. But to look like you in a manner that people will be able to distinguish the difference between us. To be able to talk like you. So they'll realize that there's something different about us than what they have or what they don't have. God, give us the desire, first of all, and then the courage to follow through with just sharing your love. You give us seeds, we plant the seeds, but you make all things grow. Help us to take the seeds of sharing and be faithful to use them. And God, we'll just take our hands off of it from that point and we'll let you make things grow a new life in Christ, a community that cares, a church that loves and grows and reaches out. We know that you have great plans, perfect plans, not just for us, but for this church in the new year. So help us to be faithful, to listen, to be quiet, to recognize your voice, and then to follow through with whatever you're asking us to do Take away our apprehensions and our fears and give us a confidence and a unity so that we can accomplish great things in this place and around us in your name. Thank you for a beautiful Christmas season. As we leave this place today, Heavenly Father, we're going on our separate ways, but please keep us united in love and in care and in prayer. Heal those who are sick that are missing from today's service. We love you. Let our words and actions reflect that. Keep us safe until you bring us back together again. In the name we pray, amen.